All right, well, I first want to say thank you to everyone for coming. I know it's probably been a long day for most of you, probably a long night ahead for some of you with data night, coming, data night out coming up. Um, so going to dive right in and get started. So I'm Dustin Schimmick, Senior Manager of Analytics for the Master Lock Company. Um, I'm going to talk with you about how we use the 80-20 rule and Tableau to simplify our business at Master Lock. We'll start out with just a really quick history on the Master Lock Company. Talk about what is 80-20, how does 80-20 apply to business, how we implemented 80-20 at Master Lock, and then how we brought it all together using Tableau and actioned it. So five bullet point history on a 100 year old company here, very brief. Um, we are located in, we call it beautiful Milwaukee, Wisconsin on the slide. I think we made these slides uh, back in the middle of July. Um, I looked at the temperature, it's about 27 degrees in Milwaukee right now, so glad to be here in Las Vegas. Um, we were founded in 1921, so about 100 years ago. We did make a big acquisition in 2015 of Century Safe. If you have a safe in your home, chances are it may be Century. We do still manufacture in Milwaukee, so very proud of that. Uh, but we're really a global company, global supply chain, customers all around the world, offices around the world. So what is 80-20? Well, 80-20 is really the Pareto principle, the law of the vital few. And what this is all about is what we usually see in data sets is that 80% of the output usually comes from 20% of the input. And it was pioneered by this strapping gentleman in the upper uh, corner of the screen, Vilfredo Pareto. Great rhyming name, right? Um, and what Pareto uh, first saw when he discovered this was uh, as an Italian man, he was studying land ownership in Italy, okay? And what he noticed was that about 80% of the land was owned by about 20% of landowners. Now he started taking a look at other countries and saw this same phenomenon occurring. And he got kind of obsessed with this observation and he famously wrote, he famously wrote about um, what he saw in his garden. He was a gardener and he saw that 20% of the pea pods in his garden were driving about 80% of the pea production. Um, so he was the kind of the one that first wrote about this uh, principle and thus the name Pareto principle okay but the cool thing about this is we can take this very simple observation and use it to help us solve some really complex problems in the business world that's what we did at master lock so where does 80 20 occur it really occurs just about everywhere um, just to get us thinking about it I put a few examples up here so in sports you think about the Chicago Bulls in the 90s and Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen and how many points they drove, um, you know, in the seasons where they won the NBA championships. In wealth, we always hear the term on the news these days, the 1%. The 1%, uh, top 1% in the United States control an overwhelming majority of the wealth. Think about the high performers. We all know who they are, right? Burning the midnight oil, taking on extra projects. Top performers at work oftentimes drive an overwhelming percentage of the productivity in the office place. And then going back to thinking about Pareto and his, uh, his peas and his pods, fruit and vegetable yield. Um, so I pulled together a couple kind of fun examples here um, using some data sets that had 80s and 20s that really popped out. And the first one is a data set that I created using a free data set uh, on Kaggle. It's called the NBA Players Data Set. Um, I have a link to it on my LinkedIn page along with um, a dashboard out on Tableau Public just like this one if you want to take a look. Um, but this data set um, has 20 years of NBA statistics um, for every player that played during that stretch of time. And a cool attribute in there is the college that the player went to. And so what I did was I just took a look at, I started exploring a little bit and I took a look at, hey, what would it look like if I charted out, created a Pareto chart, the cumulative volume of point production by college? And that's what we've got here. It's actually almost a perfect 80-20. 80% um, of points scored actually came from 23% of colleges. There's 267 colleges in this data set. You see the 77% of colleges that are on the tail of the Pareto chart drove 23% of points scored. Okay. Um, so almost a perfect 80-20. Um, one thing that we do tend to see uh, in data sets, both kind of the for, for fun data sets as well as in the business world, is that there oftentimes are some best of best, you know, customers, in this case teams that pop and you see that in the corner of this chart. Six teams out of the 267 in this data set 
actually drove 21% of points scored. Just six teams. Does anyone want to take a guess at who the number one team is? You just shout it out. I know you got headsets on. Who? Nope. UNC. UNC is number one. Duke is number two. Kentucky is number three. <laughs> um, if you go over to the 80% line, um, what was kind of ironic was the team that was right on the line, right on the 80% cusp, um, was a perennial Cinderella team. Um, it's kind of poetic that they landed there, Gonzaga. And Gonzaga right at the 80% line. Um, and then I apologize if you went to school here, number 267 out of 267. Um, I didn't know who this, this college was, I do now. Um, it's the Lebanon Valley Fighting Dutchman. That's their logo there <laughs> in the, on the right-hand side of the screen. They did send one player to the NBA, and he averaged a fraction of a point per season. So not the place you probably want to go to if you're looking to get into the NBA. Uh, but just a little bit of fun here with this data set to get us thinking about 80-20 and just how prevalent it is um, in terms of appearing in, in data sets. Um, the second example that I had is uh, the Tableau usage of the dashboards that I've published out to my user base at my company, okay? And actually, uh, this tail would continue probably all the way down to the floor, maybe even further than that, I cut it off. Uh, but definitely an 80-20 um, appeared here. And um, you can see with my, my top users here, my best of best, think of these as my UNCs, my Dukes, my Kentuckys. Um, these folks are using my dashboard once every 10 minutes, okay? Um, I've got a lot that are kind of in the center here, still 80s, right? They're using my dashboards a couple times a day. Um, and then I've got a ton that would be way down here that are on the tail. Now, some of those, it makes sense that they're on the tail. Um, others don't. And for those that don't, that I know I have content that's highly relevant to them, how I action this is I reach out to them, see how things are going, get curious, maybe set up a training with them, things like that. So I do use this um, Pareto chart um, all the time, really. Um, to help drive engagement with my Tableau dashboards. Okay, so how does 80-20 actually apply to business? So remember, with the Pareto principle, 20% of the inputs drive 80% of the outputs, okay? And in business, what we typically see when we start to do analysis on our customer sales is that 20% of our customers drive about 80% of our sales. On the product side, about 20% of our products are SKUs are usually responsible for about 80% of our revenue. If you're domestic you know, business, only do business in the US, 20% of your markets, maybe 20% of your states, will probably typically drive about 80% um, of your sales. If you're a global company, you know, 20% of the regions that you serve around the world probably will drive about 80% of your revenue. Um, and then think back to the office place, you know, the high performers, 20% of employees typically drive 80% of the production in the office place. So 8020 is a nice tool to help us know where to focus on things. And it can create a ton of value in simplifying your business. So I wanna walk through this chart that I've got up here. Um, what happens when you've got you know, a 100 year old company, during the first you know, 80, 90 years, um, you might be climbing um, the value axis as you add complexity, right? Um, so we've got complexity and value on each axis. So as you get more complex, you add more value out to the marketplace. But at some point, you actually might get so complex, have so many SKUs, have so many customers, have so many employees, so many initiatives, they actually start reducing value. And you can find yourself down here, right? 80-20 is a tool to help us, if we get to this point, back up to that optimal point of value and complexity by focusing on the right things. So how did we do this at Masterlock? Okay, first, why did we do it? Masterlock has a lot of really nice people. Um, it's the best place I've ever worked. We also have people that like to say yes a lot. Um, we were saying yes to a lot of new products, to you know all of our customers, right? Spending a ton of time in the day chasing down every single thing, right? Um, what happened was we added so many customers, so many SKUs, um, that we got to a point where it was hard to manage all of it. Um, so we needed to look at our business through a new lens. This would be the lens of 80-20. Okay, and how we set the stage for this is we did a bunch of analysis, okay? And I'll start with customers and product. 
So he used Tableau to build a bunch of Pareto charts. This one is one by product, just as an example, where we can take a look at what are the cumulative volumes um, by SKU that we have. So in this chart, you see kind of the distribution is an 80-20. You can see where there's 80% of our SKUs. It's about 20% of the way down the horizontal axis. Um, that group of SKUs, and I'll touch a little bit more on this later, that's the group of SKUs that we really want to focus on. We really want to make sure we're protecting. We're not scrambling around spending half of our days protecting SKUs down on the end of the tail. Um, it's okay to spend a little bit of time there, but we really want to make sure resource-wise that we're honed in on these, okay? So we've got a really useful tool that we use called a quad chart, and it's pretty simple. Um, what this quad chart helps us do is it helps us segment our customers and products. And when we do that, it then helps us identify what our strategy is gonna be for each of these segments, okay? Now where Tableau comes into play is what we can do is we can create actions on these Pareto charts, right, to take a look at what customers and what products are 80s and 20s. And so in this example, I'm just gonna walk through each quad. In this example I have up on the screen, our quad one is gonna be our largest percentage of revenue. That's gonna be the intersection of our 80s customers and our 80s products. Again, Tableau can give us instant visibility into who they are once we've built these charts. This is the group that we wanna make sure we're protecting. So when we're thinking about, as employees of Masterlock, what we're focusing on every day, we wanna make sure it's here, first and foremost, right? Quad two. So this is gonna be our 20s product, so the tail of our product up here, and then our 80s customers. So top customers and so-so eh, product, not so good product. Um, that's gonna be a little bit smaller percentage of revenue than the quad one. Um, and the question we wanna ask there is, um, if there's like, you know, 80s product that these good customers can buy, um, can we potentially migrate to them, mi migrate them to that, right? From the 20s product that they're buying to the 80s product. If we do that, make it a lot easier on our operations as well as the front end of our business just in managing our SKU base. In quad three, this is gonna be um, our best products going to kind of the tail end of our customer base, okay? Um, great piece of business, but the question we need to be asking ourselves is are we spending too much time here? Um, you know, should we be spending more time in quad one? Are we spending six out of eight hours a day, you know, chasing down issues associated with customers in this quad? So can we, can we run it, but run it with the appropriate amount of resources? And then quad four, this is gonna be the tail of your customer revenue as well as your product revenue. Um, this is going to be a quad where it's gonna be a pretty small percentage of revenue and we're gonna to wanna to ask ourselves, are we getting paid to do business here? We wanna make sure we're getting paid for this if we're doing it. We don't wanna lose money in this quad. If we are, we might wanna get out of it. It's a small percentage of revenue, but could be a big number of products and a big number of customers. Think about it that way. Another thing that we can use Tableau for in analyzing our business through the 80-20 lens is by mapping our 80s and 20s, okay? So you can map out where are your 80s customers, where are your 20s customers, where are your 80s products, where are your 20s products going? And make sure that you're serving these markets really well where your 80s customers and 80s products exist, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is walk you through a really quick example of how you can do an 80-20 analysis in Tableau. It's under three minutes. Um, it's not intended to create um, a beautiful dashboard. It's intended to create just a really bare bones functional dashboard um, and just demonstrate some of the functionality that's in Tableau to um, allow you to do 80-20 analysis. So I'm gonna walk you through how I built the Pareto chart um, of the point production, cumulative point production by college. Um, so I pulled in my data set from Kaggle and I pulled in the total points scored by each college, sorted it from high to low. Then what I did was I created a quick table calculation to give me a running total. So now I've got cumulative point volume by college. And what I'm gonna do is add a secondary calculation 
to give me a percent of total. So now it's not the cumulative points, but the cumulative percentage volume. And what I'm gonna do here is turn this into a bar chart and then flip it horizontally. First, I'm gonna filter out actually the high schoolers that were in here. So the nuns were actually players that went straight from high school to the NBA. I'm gonna take them out. Now I'm gonna flip it. Fit width just to get the Pareto chart all in one view. And I'm gonna take the headers out of here so I've just left with a Pareto chart. I'm going to name this points scored by college of player. And I'm going to duplicate it, create just a really quick table so I can see who they were. That's one thing to see the chart, the visual, um, confirm there's an 80-20 going on, but then it's another thing to see who actually falls on each piece of the Pareto. So here I've got just a really quick table showing me the cumulative volume, what the teams are, North Carolina, Duke, Kentucky. Um, and the corresponding percentage of where they fall. I'm gonna pull both of these worksheets into a dashboard, create a really quick action. Um, you can, those of you that use Tableau frequently can probably see where I'm going with this. A quick action um, between the chart and the table. And this will allow me to take a look at who my 80s are. I could also go the other direction and look at my 20s. So that took me about two minutes right there. Um, I'm gonna spend about 30 or 40 more seconds here adding a reference line in. And this is just the reference line that calls out exactly where 80% of the volume, cumulative volume lies. I'm gonna go up, change this to constant, type in 0.8 for 80%, and then add a label to it. Let's say 80% of points scored, 80% of points. Go back to my dashboard. There you have it, I think it was about two minutes and 50 seconds. So just a really quick down and dirty example of how you can do 80-20 analysis in Tableau. The functionality is there, it's the perfect tool for it. <clears throat> um, I do have this video posted to my LinkedIn. I also have um, a cleaned up version of the dashboard um, posted out to Tableau Public as well. So how did we bring 80-20 to life at Masterlock? Uh, I mentioned that we did a ton of analysis to identify who our 80s were. What we then did was we did kind of an end-to-end -end review of our business and took a look at what are the things that we would have to do to really serve our 80s well, both from a customer standpoint and product standpoint. We built some dashboards around those, the metrics that we established for those things and created a daily standing meeting with a wall of dashboards that measure all of those things assigned an owner to each dashboard, and we do a daily walkthrough of how we're doing with those elements to make sure that we're, tr that we're on track with them, okay? Um, as a bonus, I'll touch on this uh, in a few slides, but we also created an analytics program for our top customers, our best of best customers, um, that allows them access to only insights that they get for being one of our top customers. So the daily huddle, I mentioned this daily standing meeting. Um, it's literally a standing meeting. You see a picture of it taking place right here in the center. Um, we have all of the key stakeholders from our company attend it. We've got all the dashboards, many of them Tableau behind us here, um, which are measuring how we're doing against those metrics that we established to make sure we're serving our 80s well, both product and customer wise. And what we do is we focus on how we did yesterday with our 80s, okay? And so what a report out might look like is, I zoomed in on a dashboard that I own at the company. Uh, what it might look like is I'll get up and I'll stand up and after I refresh my dashboard for the day and post it up there, I'll say, hey, good morning, I'm Dustin. Yesterday we were green or red. It's just a binary, green or red for this measure. We've been trending pretty well. Um, in this case, I'm green here um, and I don't need any help. If it was red and I'd been red for a few days, I might say, you know, we've been trending a little poorly here. Uh, we've been red for three or four days and you know what I looked into this and I need help from John Peter and Paul and John Peter and Paul Chances are they're key stakeholders. They're in the daily huddle with us and we can bunch up afterwards and talk about it and address it right there Maybe the next day we take a uh, follow-up to talk about what we did about it um, So a really nice mechanism to make sure that we're all adhering to what we promised to do um, And the metrics that we established in serving our, our 80s customers and products 
Okay, so some other examples of how we actioned 8020. I mentioned briefly that we created a, we call it kind of a VIP analytics program that we branded as Compass at Masterlock. So this is available to our best customers only. And what it involves is our sales leaders and myself um, getting on calls, share outs in person if we can, um, visit a customer in person, and reviewing with them on a regular basis, um, you know, kind of how they're doing with our top products, showing them where there's opportunities uh, to penetrate the marketplace with our top products. Uh, and this is available only to them for being a top customer. So this is an over-service mechanism that we put in place to better serve our top customers. Another example is, oops, back up a second, um, aligning our sales territories with our 80s. So making sure that we've got really solid coverage around our 80s customers and 80s products and where the concentrations of those things are. So some takeaways are that 8020 is a tool to focus on the most important things in your business. Tableau is the absolute perfect tool for doing 8020 analysis. I have spent hundreds of hours <laughs> doing 8020 analysis in Tableau, um, and it is really the perfect tool, not only from my perspective, but also from you know, our executive team's perspective that's seen the output of it, um, and just how we're able to really analyze our business kind of um, on a point and click basis and through an 8020 lens. Um, Tableau is also a really good tool to action the insights. I went through some examples of how we use Tableau to action um, these, these insights. We've got the wall of dashboards measuring how we're doing. We've got the you know, Compass Analytics program. Great tool for actually putting 8020 into action. So the one thing that I want you to think about as you go to day to night out tonight is where are the 80s you know, in your company? What data sets are they in? Where can you find them? You saw the three minute video, you can definitely use Tableau pretty easily um, once you find the data and once you uh, know where the 80s might be hiding. Uh, once you find them, how can you use that information to actually improve focus on those things? Make recommendations to your superiors on how you serve those things. So something to think about. I wanna close with a quote that we received from uh, one of our senior director of sales. He'd been with our company for 23 years. Um, and this is a big deal. You think back to the first slide that I had introducing Master Lock. You know, 100 year old company. You saw the picture of Harry Houdini and Johnny Carson with our lock. A domestic manufacturer, by no means a technology company until very recently with our electronic locks. Um, you know, it, it was a lot of hard work to get, the, uh, to get the wall of dashboards going, right? And to get Tableau embedded into our culture. Um, Kevin sent a note one day to myself and some of our leaders in IT that said, the Tableau reports that we utilize have allowed us to track our business better than I've ever experienced in my 23 year career. This was a huge deal for us. Um, this was really cool and this should be a great encouragement to those of you that are maybe fighting through some challenges in your business um, or using Tableau for the first time or first few times. There is light at the end of the tunnel um, and it's very rewarding to get there. With that, I wanna say have fun at day to night out tonight. Please fill out the survey and thank you for your time. Okay.